Hi there, this is Eric Keller for Otoy. In this video, we're going to take a look at editing materials in Octane for Unity. And we're going to be exploring this uh, living room scene here. It's a great scene, kind of has a stylized look to it. I like it because it reminds me of kind of like a claymation uh, set or something like that. So a lot of uh, opportunities here for some creative exploration. But let's just take a look at the basics of working with uh, the materials. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on this phone here. So I'm going to select the phone and press F so that we zoom in on it so we can take a look at it. Right now it's got a standard material applied to it and it has a texture. The texture map itself actually is used to add color to the phone and also some of the items on the table. But we're just going to worry about the phone here. So I'm going to zoom in there so we can take a look at it and as you can see as the render builds it's kind of a very normal looking kind of red flat material. So let's try and see if we can make it look a little bit more exciting, adding a little bit of shine to it, maybe kind of a bump texture as well. So if I had the phone selected and I take a look in the inspector window, you can see that we have this phone matte rollout here. And the shader is currently set to standard and you can see there is an albedo texture applied. We could, of course, uh, edit some of these settings here and it will update in Octane for Unity, but we want to do something a little bit more exciting. So I'm going to set the shader to uh, Octane PBR Override. When I do that, the phone is going to turn white. And if we take a look here in Unity, the editor's view, it's white here as well. So if we want the texture to be visible here in the Unity editor, what we need to do is go to the uh, shader attributes and you can see there's a field here for unity display texture So I'm going to click on this to open it up It opens up the browser which shows all the textures that are currently part of this project So I'll type in phone because I know that the texture is named phone or that's part of the name anyways And that restricts the view to just the textures that have the word phone in their title So let's click on telephone table diffuse so we can see the phone turns red again but nothing changes in the Octane render viewport because now we need to apply those textures to the shader that's applied to the phone. So let's close this for a moment. And I'm going to go here to phone mat and I'm going to choose add texture. I'm going to click on it twice so that we have two texture slots. One is going to be for the diffuse. One's going to be for the bump. If we had more textures, of course, we can add as many textures as we need. I'll click on this little dot here and it'll pull up the select texture menu again. Type in phone. I'll add telephone table diffuse. I'll click on this button right here. Oops, let's try spelling it right. And telephone table bump. Now those textures are applied, but we're not going to see any change yet until we connect them to the Octane material. So to do that, Let's click on the View Source button right here. This will open up Octane VR and we have access now to the Node Graph Editor. I'm going to middle mouse button drag here, use the scroll wheel to zoom in or out. And we can see here's Material Out, which connects the material to Unity. And here are our two textures. I'm going to right click and choose Materials Glossy. So this brings up our glossy material. And let's connect the table diffuse JPEG to the diffuse input of the glossy material. Let's connect the output of the glossy material to material out here. And you can see now our phone is nice and red and has numbers on it. Uh, let's add the bump. So I'm going to drag a wire from the bump texture here, connect it to the bump input of glossy material. And we can see there's the bump right there. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer so we can see what's going on with the phone. And let's bring up our editor here. You can see the bump is a little bit strong, probably a bit more than we need. So let's tone that down a little bit. Let's expand this so we can see what's going on. I'll select telephone bump.jpg, and here in the node inspector, I'm going to reduce the power. So this will darken the texture and in doing so it's going to bring down some of that bump. That looks a little bit more reasonable. And the next thing we can do is we could edit the texture for the diffuse kind of the same way. If I select this diffuse texture and adjust the power, we can see it gets darker or we can adjust the gamma. But usually when I'm adjusting uh, a color texture, 
um, that's input on a material, rather than use the settings that are directly related to that texture, I like to use a color correction node so that the changes to the uh, color of the texture are independent of the settings on the texture node itself. This is helpful, especially if you want to use the same texture for multiple inputs and you want to have different variations of it. So I'm going to right click here in the node inspector and under textures, under mappings, I'm going to choose color correction. This brings up a color correction node. And I'm going to take the output of the texture node, put in the input of color correction, the output of color correction into the diffuse of the glossy material. When I select the color correction node, we can take a look here in the node inspector. This is the settings for the texture itself. So I'm going to collapse this so we don't get confused here. These are the settings for the color correction. So if I want to increase the brightness, I can select this and type in two. Then we get a bright red phone or I can make it darker. That's pretty straightforward. I can also adjust the hue. Let's say I wanted an orange phone or a green phone instead of a red one. I like the green phone. It's kind of crazy. And then of course we also have things like saturation, if we want to pump up the saturation, gamma and contrast, so on. You know, kind of the typical settings that you'd find on a color correction node in, in uh, other types of editing software such as Nuke or something like that. So pretty straightforward, but also very handy. So let's take a look at the glossy material itself and see what settings we can change there. So I'll select the glossy material. You can see in the node inspector, we still have the rollouts for the color and the bump. So let's collapse these for the moment. I can change the specular. If I bring this down, of course, the specular highlights are gonna be darkened, so they're not gonna be as prominent. But I could also, if I wanted to, expand this and set it from grayscale color to say RGB color. And I could make this kind of a greenish color, which would make the phone look a bit more metallic because typically metals, you get sort of a uh, highlight that is tinted to be sort of in line with the uh, diffuse color. So you can tint the highlight that way. I can also adjust the roughness. If I bring this all the way down, it'll be very shiny and adjust, say, the index of refraction. If I put this up to something like 2.5, we're going to get an extremely shiny phone. And you can see now you can see that tint in the specular highlight is even more prominent. You have a kind of a green metallic phone. It's a little bit over the top there, but you get the idea. And we can continue to adjust the roughness and other settings. So it's a lot of fun to kind of play with these settings and see what different types of looks you can create for your materials. Let's set the specular back to a grayscale color so it looks a little bit more natural. Of course, you can also bring in other textures and connect them to the other inputs for the glossy material. So if I expand specular and click on RGB color, I can choose RGB image and bring in a texture. If you bring in a texture here in the editor from someplace outside of the project, say like a texture on your hard drive, um, the Unity project is not necessarily going to save that texture as part of the project. So you could run into a situation where that link to the texture is broken. And that's especially important if you move the project to a different computer or someplace else. So generally speaking, if you want to add a new texture to a material, the best way to do it is to go into the uh, asset library and in your textures folder, you know, right click and choose import new asset, import that texture into Unity. And then when you're editing the material, you'll want to, let's say, just select the phone here again. You'll want to add the texture clicking on one of these buttons to bring up the texture browser and add it that way. This way that the textures are always self-contained within the Unity project and you don't have any links to anything that is outside of the Unity project. So you have less danger of things getting broken and not working correctly. So uh, just, a, just a quick tip there. So that's kind of the basics of working with materials. Uh, a good way to practice is to take the scene and take a look at some of the other objects in the scene and play with the materials and see what you can come up with in terms of different looks for the different objects in the scene.